everyone, welcome back to Calabunga Corner. In this episode, we have a wonderful, excellent, marvelous artist that I've known for a long time who has worked on a lot of different things, including Ninja Turtles, which is why he's here today. And I have to thank you, Mark, for joining us. This is really awesome that we've been able to get to know each other through the years, and I have always appreciated well, actually, your Actually, you're joining me. Because yeah. you're in my house. That's true. That's true. Yes. Yeah, well, welcome. <laughs> With lots of awesome artwork. <laughs> so, now, uh, you have been inspired and an artist your entire life from your father, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started drawing when I was um, about three, four years old. My father was Vaughn Bodie, and he... He started, uh, he did his first comic book, he self-published, was called Das Kampf in 1963, which was when I was born. So it's been almost 50 years of comic book art, um, and I kind of am the timeline of that. And uh, uh, my father was, was hugely influential to, to many people, including Kevin Eastman, who who created the Turtles, he was a big fan of my father's work, and that's how we met. Yeah, Kevin's known for Peter and Kevin were both really known for finding artists that influenced them, and through the years after mm -hmm. creating the Turtles, and your dad definitely did influence. Um, Kevin loved that type of artwork throughout his life, and uh, what is some of the areas where your dad's artwork is published that? people who have not heard of you could find it. Well, he he did a, um, he started off um, doing self-publishing uh, before it was cool. And he actually was one of the first people to do independent comics. And he was all for creators' rights before that was cool. And so a lot of his peers that I grew up around were doing, were creating stuff for companies like Marvel and DC and uh, Warren Publishing, you know, um, and, and not owning the stuff that they created. And my father would, uh, would insist on owning his own work. Um, but he was mostly known for his work in National Lampoon in the early 70s and uh, and some of the adult magazines and, uh, and underground comics that he, he uh, was a pioneer of. And he also won the Hugo Award for Best Fanzine Artist in 1968 and won the Yellow Kid Award. It was the second um, American comic book artist to win the Yellow Kid Award, which is the highest award you can win in Europe as a comic artist. That's cool. That's really, really cool. Oh, um, he's won a lot and has done a lot. Uh, do you have a favorite piece of his that he's done that stands out? Well, it would be, it would probably be Cheech Wizard and Cobalt 60. Uh, Cheech Wizard was a hat with stars on him uh, and and he was in National Lampoon. He was featured for, for about four or five years before my father passed away in 75. Um, but Cobalt 60 was a science fiction story that my father uh, did a whole cast of characters, but only did like a little 10 page, I think he did two 10 page stories uh, with Cobalt and then left the property um, and went on to other things. But he created a whole cast of characters, and once I was old enough, I think I was 18 or 19, uh, to draw the material myself, I started recreating new, new stories for Cobalt 60 um, and, uh, and flushed it out into a 200-page uh, graphic novel, which is now being optioned for movies and animation and stuff like that. Oh, that would be awesome to see, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see it too. It's, it takes a lot of patience, you know, to, to get these things going. Um, uh, but um, 
the cobalt seems to have some magic that the others, you know, the, the other worlds that my father created are all brilliant, but, uh, but cobalt seems to have an extra shine to it. And um, I, I was mentioning to you earlier that uh, I met Kevin uh, at a San Diego comic convention, I think in 1985, 80, 86 maybe. And he approached my table and he was like, I'm a big fan. And, and uh, you know, I created this comic book called uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I had vaguely heard of. I, I wasn't familiar uh, completely, but I made like I was. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, yeah. I, I know that. It, it hadn't quite gotten to that, you know, huge place that it, that it became. But, um, but yeah, like, um, for instance, this is a, a drawing that uh, my father did in 1968. And uh, I redrew this for a recent art show, but um, you could see in the feet um, that, you know, the influence of some of the Ninja Turtle uh, design elements oh, yeah. came from. And, and even in the beak a little bit, if you just expand it out this way, <laughs> you know, it's just, it, it's just the, you know, there, there's similarities there and everybody has influence. And my father had his influences in, uh, you know, Walt Kelly's Pogo and um, uh, even the lizards, my father's famous lizards uh, came from uh, Walt Disney's The Rite of Spring, you know, from Fantasia. Yeah. Where the duck-billed dinosaur falls into the muck. And my father went home that night. He was just a child, I think, of 14 or 15 years old. He went home and he took the duck-billed dinosaur and put a human body on it. And there there was the birth of the Bodhi lizard. Which are really well known. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're pretty, you know, in uh, spray can culture, uh, we're, uh, our characters are universal in that genre and it's worldwide now it's it's like every major city that has uh has spray can murals or um i, I hate to use the graffiti the, the g word graffiti but um wherever there's there's a huge uh presence of graffiti usually the graffiti artists will put uh their piece and then put a bodhi character next to them and just became synonymous with uh, the urban culture of spray can art that's a cool way to be spread around because everyone will see those. <laughs> yeah, it's a free billboard, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that my father would have liked it at first. I think whenever somebody got too close, to, like one of his peers would get too close to his style, he would, he would uh, ruffle their shirt and go, hey, you know, I've worked hard to develop my style and you are not going to, you know, get so close that, that people mistaken your work for mine. And he was very adamant about that and in, in, uh, into owning everything and uh, in protecting his rights as a, as a creator. And uh, he, he was way before his time. In that, in that, in that. Yeah, because a lot of creators did not keep their stuff through the no. years. So all these characters created and it's just to the company. No, he knew, he knew Jack Kirby and he knew Stan Lee and uh, and people like that and in early on they were just work for hire and um they really don't own anything you know the dc marvel owns all those characters that they created kirby created all kinds of of the biggest superheroes we know today and um there's barely a mention of him uh in some of these movies and stuff that come out but but he was one of the designers um but that's just the way it goes Turtles when you do. has done their nod to Kirby with uh, the Donatello one-shot, which was made into a cartoon, and The King. <laughs> yeah, yes, absolutely. So, yeah, it, it, we've definitely seen, because Eastman and Laird do try to get out the names of the artists that inspired them. There's no holding back that they were inspired with Daredevil and all these different comics that were and out Frank of Frank Miller, yeah. Yeah. So... What was your first published piece of artwork that you actually did? Well, the first piece of artwork I ever sold was I was at a convention in New York City with my father at a Jim Warren convention. And I think Frank Frazetta was the, was the guest of honor. 
and he was he had sea hag uh, was one of his uh, uh, was one of the paintings that he had just finished and uh, uh, and was featured in the middle of the room and uh, I had a table with my father and I had done a bunch of little drawings and Jim Warren came over to the table and, and bought one of my pieces for fifteen dollars and I was I think eight or nine years old so that was the beginning of my professional career <laughs> <laughs> nice start <laughs> yeah I had Jim Warren you know Mr. Monster and uh, eerie and creepy magazine uh, he he, uh, he he bought my first piece and uh, I later got published uh, in a little uh, thing called Cosmic Circus uh, when I was 15 and that was probably the first time I saw print but then heavy metal magazine after that was like uh, uh, at the time uh, Maddie Simmons was running the magazine and uh, and he wanted my father to be part of heavy metal when he first started it and uh, my father died like my, my father actually pitched to him that they call it Bodie magazine and I have the dummy <laughs> the dummy book that he gave to Maddie Simmons says don't call it heavy metal call it Bodie and uh, <laughs> and he was like actually into it he was like thinking about it uh, but my father died a few weeks later and um, and uh, it became heavy metal and so when I was 15 I I colored my father's strip Zooks first lizard in orbit about a lizard that goes into outer space and is based on the on the the the, the Apollo trips to uh, the moon uh, a tragic little story but um, I uh, I colored it and and did a pretty good job for a 15 year old because I'd been drawing since a little kid at that point so uh, that was my first real professional job was working for Heavy Metal Magazine and and then uh, I snowballed it into working for Epic Illustrated where I was inking and coloring my father's unfinished work and then eventually Cobalt 60 you know at 19 I, you know I was uh, I, I started doing Cobalt 60 for Epic Illustrated Archie Goodwin was the editor at the time and that's Marvel. Uh, uh, so I, I, I snowballed my career and you know just by uh, following my, the path of my father and, uh, <clears throat> and so uh, Wait, it's good. always been up and down you know it's it's a roller coaster being a, an artist and making a living uh, but if you're diverse and um, and don't put all your eggs in one basket uh, the arts can be can be very comfortable living and um, and I, I've been very fortunate to um, to have had a, a legacy that uh, that has has unfolded before me he made a great road for you to get into <laughs> yeah I, I don't think he ever would have um, got into tattooing or or uh, you know or, or, or spray can murals or anything like that my father was more into uh, doing creating the worlds and then licensing them and I think he would have been all about licensing and um, I, I, I really don't I think it would surprise him you know that all the stuff that I've been able to do with our with our uh, worlds you know uh, I get to to fill in where he left off and it, it's a, it's kind of a he's he's um, he's immortal and I'm mortal and we work really well together yeah mm -hmm. that's cool that's really cool mm -hmm. so, and you've got such a wonderful art background and we were able to have that experience of seeing some of it in the Ninja Turtle comics now um, how were you approached to do the comic did he ask you when you first met or later actually it was me that approached Kevin uh, he I mean after we met in San Diego that year um, I had kind of like that black and white boom that happened that year or those years uh, in the mid 80s um, I was like 
my wife Molly, uh, we saw this Miami, Miami Mice t-shirt, you know, in a, at a mall, you know, in, in San Francisco. And, we're like, and she's like, wouldn't that make a great comic book? And I was like, you know, it would, you know. Uh, and I, I went, I went home, and I, I drew up my own version of the Miami Mice, and uh, and I pitched it to Rip Off Press that uh, did the Fabulous Fury Freak Brothers, and and uh, because they were just down the street, and I said I got this idea for a comic book, and black and white is really hot right now, and they were like, well, you know, Fred Todd was like, oh, I don't know, uh, sounds questionable. Uh, but I'll give it a go. Uh, you know, we, we need something new going on here. We need new blood, and uh, and so I I within a month I banged out the comic book and uh, and it it sold like sixty thousand copies, <laughs> and then printed another one and sold more. And so like in in a year's time, it was one hundred and eighty thousand comics we sold in one year of Miami Mice, and I I didn't expect it to. To fly like that. In fact, I, I killed it before it. The print runs were below twenty thousand because you know they were on second and third printings and stuff. I I just didn't expect it to go that far, and I didn't want to live with Miami mice the rest of my life. I was I was hunting <laughs> mice underneath my drawing table. You know there was mice running around in in the, in the garage I was working in, and I was down there with a BB gun late at night, you know, working on Miami mice and like hunting these mice <laughs> with my BB gun. And I was like, you know, we've, we've gone too far with this. <laughs> we have to end it now. And, and, uh, and, uh, but to get back to what you asked, um, in number four, which was the final issue of Miami mice, uh, I asked Kevin to, to do a guest spot and put the turtles in with the and, and also Dave Sin. Uh, so we had uh, Cerebus, the Ninja Turtles, and Miami Mice all together in the final issue. And uh, uh, that's how we started working. And then he, he said, well, why don't we do an issue together? And I'm on, we're on issue number 18. And would you like to do a, a book together? And I was like, absolutely. It sounds like a lot of fun. And, and we, what should we do? And then... I came up with some some crazy like uh, some idea about some old uh, like uh, uh, Godfather type figures like you know Italian mobsters you know versus the turtles and it was like there was some good ideas there but we weren't feeling it and then I said but you know I'm a big Bruce Lee fan why don't we do uh, Bruce Lee meets the turtles. You know, how can we go wrong, you know? And, and <laughs> Kevin was like, yeah, that's it, you know? And so so we did a, we did a tribute to Bruce Lee, and and uh, and it was off to the races. And we, we had ball, you know, me and Eric Talbot and Kevin had such so much fun. I think I think it's the most fun I've had in a comic. I think Kevin says that too. But, but we really, really just were like, had grins on our faces the whole time we were working on it, and when we divvied up the artwork, it was it was like real cutthroat too, because we all we all wanted certain pages, and we had to you know flip coins, and you know <laughs> it was pretty nasty in that hotel room when we were breaking breaking up the artwork for that for that uh, for that particular issue. But I, after that, I did th number thirty two which uh, where the turtles go to Egypt. And uh, my wife, Molly, is one of the characters um, in that. And then, uh, uh, and then I did uh, Time's Pipeline after that, which was a, a, where the turtles go to a Bodhi planet and turn into lizard turtles. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. You yeah, displayed that at TurtleCon in 92. That was a lot of fun to watch. So yeah. you have done quite a bit and it's really exciting to actually have gotten that chance to see you in uh, the Turtle Comics. I know that's where I first saw your artwork and since mm -hmm. then I've went around and seen a lot more of your style and learned about your father. So Ninja Turtles introduced me to the fandom of your work and I appreciate that. Thanks Kevin. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> And Pete. <laughs> now, you guys eventually um, did even go to Northampton and live there for a little bit. Uh, was that because of working with the turtle, or was that uh, just some other influences of moving out east? No, that was directly uh, related. Um, uh, we, we were working on issue 18, and um, I, I think we were just finished with it, and possibility um with the the launch of the turtles and how big they got um uh that i suggested to kevin that you know there was a big earthquake out here recently maybe you know our house is falling apart uh we want to raise our kid and give her a good shot at at, at you know being an adult <laughs> so, so maybe we'll what do you think about us moving out there and kevin's like yeah you, you want to do it come on you know like there'll be plenty of work for you so uh so we packed up the bags and and moved to uh, northampton and we lived there we only were going to live there for a couple of years but we got really comfortable and it was really a nice place to live and a nice place to raise a kid uh the schools are much better on, uh, out there than they are in in the bay area so we uh we went out there and we ended up staying for about 13 14 years <laughs> <laughs> yeah and now we're back in san francisco so. now is there been other projects that you've worked with kevin on uh, besides for the turtle comics uh, yeah, we worked on uh, Turtle Soup together. Uh, we worked, um, I didn't work with, uh, yeah, I worked with Kevin on on a, on a bunch of pinups and stuff. Um, we, we, we jammed on, on, on all kinds of things, but mainly, mainly the Ninja Turtles, you know, in the, in the original comic book line. Uh, and, uh, and of course, Heavy Metal. You know, when he took over Heavy Metal, I did uh, a series of new strips for, for Kevin. So we're, we still continue to do stuff. And then we just recently did a mural in L.A. above uh, Meltdown Comics. That's really, really cool. I, I got yeah. to go there and see that live. And the like, original. <laughs> the original cover, yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was not easy to do because um, it was almost all line work. And I've... Most of the murals I do, I you know put a fat cap on my on my spray can, and I and I can block in huge areas of of color, uh, and 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 do a piece in a day. I mean, we did that piece in a day, but uh, because it was all line work, and I was the one that that had the the, the can control to to pull that off. It was all line by line, like all the way through every, you know, it's just like, sh -sh 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 you know, just like, you know, like cuts and, and like chisels all the way through. And it, 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 uh, it was all lines and uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but it was like one of the most difficult pieces I've done. <laughs> well, it's still looking excellent. Yeah, it's we mimicked it pretty well. And Kevin, Kevin definitely... Uh, added his finesse um you know he he actually chalked out the drawing on the wall before we started which made it really easy because we already had the look you know and then all we had to do was execute it but it 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 the result was 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 right on now where did the idea come up for the mural kevin had you know had wanted to get to do something with me you know because i've been doing a lot of murals all over the bay area and you know in, in, in different countries as well um and uh, he wanted to to do uh, uh a uh you know get it get his hands involved in a, a in a mural someday and so uh uh he gave me an email and said uh you know hey i got this wall and i'm doing this uh this heavy metal uh, melting pot kind of show at at the Meltdown Comics in L.A. Would you would you be interested in doing a mural? And I, I said, Yeah, if we're working together on it, it sounds good, you know. And like, if we can get 
uh, you know, our, our supplies and stuff taken care of, you know, I think, I, you know, and fly me down there, I think we can make it happen. So, so it, 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 uh, it worked out. And what I really enjoyed about the fact that you guys did this was you also did it on the anniversary of the Ninja Turtles creation. It was uh, November 18th and 19th you were working on it. Oh, wow. Okay. I was like, wow, that's a, a date we'll remember. <laughs> and if you guys have not checked out this mural, check it out over at Meltdown Comics in L.A. It is so worth going to. You can see it from Sunset Boulevard, right? It's Sunset. Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can see it right from the, from the boulevard itself. So. Oh, I, it's a I, great comic store, too. I had to go into the L.A. to get it up close, though. I'm like, cool! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I remember seeing the video footage appearing online afterwards, and I'm you guys did great. You guys really did. And the, the fans really appreciate seeing things like this coming together, especially from artists that brought us the original volume of Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. so, it was a pleasure. With being Ninja Turtles, do you have a favorite turtle? I, I think it would be Michelangelo. Or no. Um, no, no, Raphael. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 I, I don't... I, <laughs> I, I I don't you know I'd say Raphael because you know he's the the dark one you know the darkest one uh, the he is, uh, I, I think I think yeah I never tripped on it too much I I just saw them as a whole you know like I didn't really you know see one as being like I want to do a <laughs> Michelangelo story I want to do like you know. Um, you know a Raphael story I, I just kind of like I just wanted to create the bad guys myself so that's one of the things you'll notice in my versions of the Ninja Turtle comics is that they never use Shredder or, or, or the other uh, bad guys in the stories because uh, I, I, those are the fun things to draw you know I want to come up with the things that the turtles battle and that's the fun part of it so you know, so you'll you'll notice that I don't really use the some of the old, you know, some of the regular bad guys. I usually just like to make them up. But. With uh, the comics, do you have a favorite of the issues you did? Was it the first one? You mentioned that was the most fun to work on, or the final product? Which one stands out to you the most of the turtle issues? Yeah, it would probably be issue eighteen. Yeah, because it was it was it was fresh, and um, by the time we got to the other one, you know. It, it seemed more more of a job and like we were trying to get through it um whereas when we first started on that first issue it just um there was a, a chemistry that that was brand new and really exciting and and the turtles were just getting on tv at that point and everything was just super exciting you know and like the sky's the limit what's going to happen next you know <laughs> it was just there was an excitement in the air that that's unequaled and you know taking limos everywhere we went and we're just silly cartoonists <laughs> <laughs> out of the way a cartoonist is coming you know it's like that you know it's like it was like a good a good thing to experience like a rock and roll lifestyle but we were just cartoonists you know like you know a butler at a fancy hotel you know where they're not used to anybody but suit and ties would be like Mr. Bodie looking mighty smart today how did you get here by the way <laughs> i was like we draw turtle comic books <laughs> and he was like oh, oh. <laughs> and it was uh you know that it was that's the way it was you know we get a limo to the front of these fancy places and and, uh, you know, we were undeservings, you know. We were, what rock and roll band are you from, anyway? <laughs> it was, it, you know, it was always, it was always, you know, I was always happy to announce that we were cartoonists. <laughs> yes. Do you have any projects that you are working on right now, murals or anything, that fans can look into seeing by the time we get this? I mean, I'm constantly working uh, on new stuff. Um, I'm mostly uh, gearing up for uh, some gallery shows in Europe, uh, one in Zurich and another one in Barcelona. And we, 
uh, some French curators I've been talking about doing a Bodhi uh, museum show in Paris. Uh, so uh, the curators came to my house and went through our body of work and my father's work and my work. And uh, they see it as my father being the beginnings of, of graffiti art in France. You know, his bubble style letters and his characters have, are, are being touted as the beginnings of this new art form. Um, which isn't new anymore, it's, it's now 30 something years old, but, um, but my father is a foundry, a founding father of that. Um, so the French want to do a proper museum show. So we might be looking at a museum show in the near future for Bodhi. That would Bodhi, be awesome. Bodhi exhibition, yeah. <laughs> You've got some great responses going overseas towards your artwork and your father's. Uh, would you like to share any of that experience with uh, the viewers? I, you know, I don't take myself too serious, um, but I've had people meet me and bow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, please, please, son, stand up. <laughs> Buy me a drink. <laughs> you know, I've had things like that happen in Italy, you know, like some places, like, I just wouldn't expect it to happen where the Renaissance masters, like, originated. I don't expect to be treated with such a red carpet, but, you know, there there are people who just love our stuff so much, you know, and it's like this uh, had people cry, you know, when they meet, meet me, and I, I just, I don't understand it. I'm like, please, uh, do I smell bad? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to cry. <laughs> you know, and, and it's, it, it, you know, I never expect this stuff, you know, but it happens. And I think it's just because the people grow up with these, these characters and loving them. And it's like a teddy bear, you know, like when you have favorite teddy bear and you see it again after like you know 20 years you, you kind of get the same reaction you know like oh you know like <laughs> so, uh, so I think I think that's just you know why people have that reaction because they they grew up with Cheech Wizard like I did and they they grew up with the lizards and the Bodhi girls and the you know and it's it's a fond memories and those are positive images you know there and there's 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 uh, a home away from home there you know and I think when people when people meet me they that all kind of you know becomes overwhelming you know now is there anything you would like to say to the turtle fans who are watching this and enjoy your artwork for all these years I would say uh, that uh, appreciate uh, the love you know that uh, the turtles have been so important um, to so many and uh, without that fan base, um, without, you know, the magic, um, without the turtles, uh, the world wouldn't be the same, you know. It's, uh, it changed the industry, it changed comics, it, uh, it, it even changed movies, you know, and I mean, it was a huge success and, and there's been nothing like it, you know, and it's all because of the fans and, you know, it's all because of you. Well, we got to give a lot of tell, uh, credit to you artists and writers that made it so as fans are fans. If it wasn't for the talent, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. Well, shucks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We'll catch you guys next time on Cowabunga Corner. <laughs>